Hello YouTube, what's going on? Well, we made it. It's Friday. Figure everyone's going to be uploading their videos for the weekend, so I might as well join. Get some housekeeping out of the way. I'm smoking Bengal slices in a Roxborough pipe. I know nothing about these pipes. Uh, I was able to catch one of Match's live streams a few weeks back on a Friday, and I poked out there to see if anybody knew anything about these because I can't seem to find any information on them. But uh, it's a cool pipe. It's got really nice deep rustications in it. I love that. And it's a sitter too, which is pretty cool. The rustication kind of reminds me of something that like uh, Eric Norton would do. So I actually nicknamed this pipe uh, my, my Bavarian Briar. <clears throat> and I love the Bengal slices. It's in that realm of plum pudding or Sutliff crumble cake English. But it has that anise top note to it, which adds a nice little touch. And the top note is not uh, overbearing or too much. Uh, I hardly notice it when I'm smoking uh, the blend. I really pick up more of the tobaccos itself. If anything, I pick up the top note later on in the aftertaste, which is nice. Um, and that top note, that anise top note, to me, is very similar to what they use on Warhorse Bar, if you've ever tried that, which is, uh, <clears throat> like, I'll say a medium to strong Virginia Burley uh, plug. Uh, but that's a good blend, too, if you've never tried it, you should probably check that out. What I want to talk about today is brick and mortar shops. <clears throat> and when I say brick and mortar shops, I mean like a real tobacco shop. I'm not talking about a smoke shop. Okay. I live in a small community on Long Island on the edge of no man's land. And I work in the city. I commute in and out every day. And when I first started getting into the hobby of pipes and pipe tobacco, I was trying to find what I consider a smoke shop, a good tobacco shop. And they really don't exist on Long Island or anywhere of the boroughs of New York City that I was able to come across. And I searched pretty far and wide. Okay. Uh, it seems to me that smoke shops today uh, really have less to do with smoking and more to do with vaping, lottery, uh, e-cigarettes, um, and then there's the cigarettes. And then what's left over is usually like cigars. And some of them don't even have decent cigars. Not that I'm really into the world of cigars, but uh, you can tell the selection is limited. <clears throat> if there is pipe tobacco in these quote-unquote smoke shops, uh, usually it's just the typical over-the-counter blends. You'll find Captain Black, you might find a pouch of uh, Sir Walter Raleigh, or half and half, and sometimes Borkum Riff. That's about it. Uh, there's been a couple that I've gone into that have had actual pipe tobacco in jars, and it was disgusting. You know, the jars had seven years of dust and grime on the lids. I didn't even want to touch them to open them up and, and take a whiff because it just wasn't going to be worth it and it's not worth it you know you need to take your time to find a good tobacco shop that actually sells pipes and not just like the cheap cheap corn cob pipes uh, some of them don't even have Missouri Meerschaum corn cob pipes in them they got these little you know five minute smoke Chinese made corn cob pipes they're crap <clears throat> I did happen to find a place that's about 
halfway between me and my workplace. Uh, so it's not bad because uh, on days when the traffic's not too bad, I can stop in there on the way home and uh, I can go around, I can take my time. They've got a really good variety of tin pipe tobaccos, house blends. Uh, they've got a, they sell a decent amount of uh, briar pipes, corn cob pipes. Uh, sometimes they have some basket pipes. They do have a good selection of cigars in there. And, uh, you know, they, they do have to um, sell Lotto and the e-cigs and the vaping stuff and the head shop stuff because that's, that's how they do make most of their business nowadays. But I was explaining to one of the workers there that I was actually happy to finally find a store like his that still had real pipe tobacco, real pipes. And they were, they were pleasant workers and owners in the shop and um, they appreciate that kind of feedback. Um, you know, you are gonna pay a little bit more for the tinned tobaccos, uh, but sometimes you find uh, hidden gems in there. You know, sometimes you'll find a blend that's already got three, four, maybe seven years of age on it, and that's pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> and a decent amount of their house blends will usually be pretty decent too. Um, you know, primarily a lot of them are mostly aromatics, uh, which I go to once in a while. But sometimes they have um, loose blends of Dunhill 965 or just a decent uh, mild English that they've put together themselves. And it's, it's nice to buy a few ounces of all of that loose in-house stuff once in a while too because it's moving the product through their store and uh, it won't become stagnant and prevent them from selling it in the future because it doesn't sell. So I think it's nice that uh, real good tobacconists or tobacco shops like that, that uh, it's kind of like a two-way street. Like us as the consumer is happy to have them around and they're happy to have us around and there's a good reciprocation there <clears throat> i think they really appreciate it when uh, people like us who are into the hobby come in and buy the product and move the product and i'm not just talking about the pipes and the tobaccos uh, you got to move some of their accessories too you know lighter fluid a couple of lighters your pipe cleaners your cleaning supplies if they have that stuff, get it through them once in a while. Don't just keep relying on the online retailers for everything just because it's cheaper. And let's not forget, you do have to pay shipping for the online retailers. And maybe it's not much, but sometimes when it comes to uh, the other products that cost about the same, like the cleaners and everything like that, uh, are you really saving that much in the end when you gotta pay for the shipping for it? So, with that, I would say that it's worth it to go out there and try and find the good shops. You know, the internet makes it easy. Uh, sometimes there's you know, views, pictures of the stores. This way you can decide if you don't even want to waste your time going in there. You know, when you see these pictures of a store online, if you're contemplating going there to see if they carry anything that's going to be worth it for our hobby, Sometimes in the pictures you'll see nothing but the, the vaping stuff and the head shop stuff and you know you know if they have pipe tobacco it's probably going to be the cheap bugle big bag stuff of eh, eh, come on that that's you know mo most of us are looking for good tobacco the premium tobacco the stuff that's going to be worth our while uh, like our Bengal slices or. You know, your Dunhills, if you can still find them in the shops. <clears throat> Whatever it is that, that it is that you like to get. So, I think that's pretty much going to be my rant for uh, this week's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I want to say thank you again to anybody who's been subscribing. Um, if anybody has any information on the Roxborough pipes, please feel free to drop comments 
down below so that all of us in the community can share and find out. And uh, until then, I hope everybody has a good weekend. Be safe, and I'll talk to you later.